welcome to the sixth lecture of graph theory statement that in every graph g uh, there exists a subset of vertices s which satisfies two properties which are the two properties so let's look at that um, the first property so the second property is easier so that means if you consider the components which is obtained by removing that subset from the graph. So, for if the subset is S, if you consider G minus S and its components, each of the component uh, will give us an indu uh, in will give us a graph, the induced subgraph on that component will be uh, a factor critical graph. That means, it is of odd order and uh, uh, if you remove any vertex from that, the rest will have a perfect matching irrespective of which vertex you remove. The other condition says, if you uh, contract each component into one vertex and say if there are some edges inside the set S, uh, just remove those edges, then we will get a bipartite graph between S and the uh, vertices which is obtained by contracting the components. In this bipartite graph, we can uh, get a perf uh, matching uh, which pairs all the vertices of S, a matching of S. That means, S is matchable in this bipartite graph. S will each, uh, we can find a matching such that each vertex of S uh, gets a partner with respect to that matching. So, we saw that if this uh, statement is true, then uh, Tut's theorem will follow from this. So, this if the statement is true, we can always say that uh, a perfect matching will exist if and only if the number of components is equal to the cardinality of S and more than that, we can uh, immediately infer the statement. So, the statement of the Tut's theorem from this thing, that means uh, a graph has a perfect matching if and only if the number of odd components is less than equal to cardinality of S. So, this is what we saw. Now, the f thing we were trying to prove in the last class was uh, that this kind of a set exists in every graph right uh, how do you, how did you do how did we do that so we first considered this d of a given a subset a let's d of a is equal to q of g minus a minus a uh, and uh, this is defined for every subset a of the vertex set and now we considered this set uh, f where uh, this f is a set of sets and then we collected all those sets which will ma which will have a maximum value of d of a the biggest it is not that uh, there is a unique set subset a so that d of a is maximum there can be many so collect all of them among them uh, we pick up uh, the biggest set that means biggest cardinality set among f from the sets in f uh, we pick up the biggest set that, that we call S. Uh, so, this S has two properties, one is if you consider D of S that is bigger than the D of A for any other set A and also among the sets which have D of A maximum, this S is the biggest set, the biggest cardinality set. So, we will show that such a set S has the desired two properties. So, what are the steps we followed? The first step was to show that each component is odd. So, we showed that if it is if any component is not odd, you can move one vertex from the that means if it is an even component, then I can move one vertex from the uh, that even component to the set S and we will get a new set S union X and then uh, this set uh, will be a bigger set. Uh, from f which will be a contradiction bigger set than x right that is what we did. The second thing was uh, uh, that is ok now this is known to be every component is known to be odd now we need a little more than that we want every component to be factor critical to show that we uh, considered a, um, so again another so I think I have to continue from here so so let us say this is the set S 
and uh, so now we have all components odd these are all odd components there is no even component at all that we proved already so now let us consider this component suppose this is not factor critical not factor critical then uh, what we can do is we can find out one vertex in x because it is not factor critical we can find out some vertex x in it and uh, when we remove that vertex from this set uh, say we are going to move it to a s so the remaining graph say this remaining graph so i'll mark it here so this remaining graph will not have a perfect matching this will not have a perfect matching perfect matching see i am writing pm for perfect matching so if it doesn't have a perfect matching what i can do is i can and uh, i can apply the tut statement uh, so this sorry this induction statement to the this graph let me call this graph as g dash now g dash is the smaller graph g is the entire big graph this is the entire graph g now this graph is called g dash see remember this is a strictly smaller graph than the original graph even if this is this 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 all of them are empty and this also is empty even then so we have removed one vertex from this thing therefore this is this graph is strictly smaller than the original so therefore we can apply the induction hypothesis on that and we can we know that there exists a, a subset s we there exists a subset s in it which satisfy the two properties and as we discussed uh, discussed uh, yesterday so in the in the last class uh, this subset will have the uh, property um, uh, that it is a bad set right so such a subset is uh, always a bad set that means uh, so if you say we can always locate a subset s dash in that uh, let me call s dash so such that so what is the property of this s dash it will be a bad set with for g dash that means q of g dash minus s dash will be uh, strictly greater than the cardinality of s this is the statement of the bad set so such a s dash so this is s dash sorry so cardinality of s dash so this this is the property of the um, this bad set now we will say uh, so we can we want to com construct a contradiction so you remember so we our plan was to move this x to this and then now this also i'll move to this this s dash also i'll move to this so that this will become uh, x plus my s dash this so finally i will consider a new set here this is s union s dash union x right i want to show that with respect to this subset if i look at the components uh, so i will get a contradiction to the original assumption that s was the biggest subset among f right the subsets in s f so we will we will we will contradict this how so anyway this is a bigger set so if i show that this set is in f that means it's a uh, uh, d of so if i call this as some set x so if i can show that d of x uh, equal to d of s or greater than or equal to d of s then i will be contradicting i will be proving that x also belongs to f right uh, x uh, either s is not in f or x is uh, also in f right that will that is what i will prove so how do i do that so you look at the component we are considering this was our component so uh, from which we have removed x and uh, uh, and uh, s dash so definitely it is uh, so it is only the component so for instance this s dash was like this here s dash was here 
so this we moved to this x is also moved right so the total number of vertices here is total number of vertices in is uh, here in this set in this uh, um, collection is odd why because total number of vertices uh, after removing x is odd sorry is even because originally we have because that is why we already proved that this entire thing was uh, odd. So, we removed x from that and moved into this. So, the remaining vertices including s dash and its components will be odd. So, will be even. So, now let, let me let me consider. So, so that I am considering this graph g dash alone. So, g dash that is we have s dash and its components. So, so see the whatever it is may have uh, even components and odd components or according to our statement all the components can be odd. So, it is a bad set anyway whatever number of odd components is more than this. So, what we know is q of q of g dash minus s dash is strictly greater than cardinality of s dash is what we know. But then when I say strictly greater, uh, is it possible that it is equal to s dash plus 1? Is it possible that q of g dash minus s dash is equal to s dash plus 1? That is just one more. So, we claim that it is not possible. Why? Because suppose s dash is a suppose s dash is an even number suppose if even right then this has to be odd. So, the number of odd components is uh, odd. So, what happens is yeah here the if s dash happens to be an even number and the number of um, components here the odd components yeah is uh, odd then therefore what happens is the total number of vertices in the odd components is odd plus s dash has an even number of vertices the uh, total happens to be even here. So, just just a minute. Right. So, uh, we are telling that can can we can we show that the uh, number of odd components of s dash has to be at least strictly greater than um, equal to 2. It, th this is true because if we consider the pa parity of s dash is equal to that means if s dash is an even number then uh, this has to be the an odd number sorry this has also has to be an odd number because together they have to make an an even number. So, similarly, so if this is a, an odd number then uh, this has to be an odd number therefore, it has to be at least 2 more. So, that is why uh, the difference is to be uh, at least 2. Now, this is just a question of counting um, this. So, the total number has to be um, even. So, so, total number has to be even. So, because initially it was an odd number, we removed our text x from that, therefore, it became an odd number. 
Now, you can see that the parity of the number of odd components and uh, the cardinality of s has to be same. So, I th if s dash is even then q, q of g dash s dash also has to be even. If s dash is odd then q of g dash minus s dash also has to be odd. Uh, sorry also has to be even. So, therefore, they cannot be differing in just one they cannot be differing in just uh, just one uh, value. So, for instance, it is not possible for them to differ in exactly one one. So, therefore, they has to be uh, like this. So, this is this is wrong. So, that means, because in that case this if this is odd uh, this will be even right and then so therefore, we, we will get this thing greater than equal to s dash plus 2 this is what we get. Hmm. And uh, wh why is it useful because so as you see going back to our um, original picture. So, when I moved x s dash and s here to form a new set the number of odd components. So, all these things remain as such while new odd components are created for this thing. How many new odd, odd components are created? So, here by removing this thing the number of odd component is 2 more than the cardinality of s while this is only increased by uh, s dash this is in increased by s dash plus 2. So, here we have added one more vertex here. So, um, therefore, so it uh, so if you compute this thing t of see suppose if you can compute d of x this is essentially the number of odd components of x minus cardinality of s. So, now this we know is essentially q of g minus s minus 1 because one odd component we destroyed and uh, then we added uh, the number of increase in the odd component is essentially s dash uh, plus 2 right. We have added this many new and now on the other hand we have x is increased from s by uh, s dash and one more right. So, this s dash gets cancelled and then here a minus 1 here a minus 1 this cancels with this. So, we will get that this is anyway is uh, this is greater than or equal to this anyway greater than or equal to um, q of g minus s minus s. So, this is d of s. So, what we get is d of x is at least uh, d of x is at least d of s. So, but of course, it cannot be strictly greater because d of s was already taken uh, to be uh, in f that means, this was the maximum value. So, this has to be equal to this. So, x is which we, we infer that x also is an element of f right and then why do not we select x instead of s that is the uh, argument we can we can um, we could have taken x instead of s because x is a bigger set than s our intention our plan or what we had assumed was s is the biggest set among um, f right, but we see a bigger set here it is a contradiction. So, it has to be factor critical. Now, the, to repeat uh, the main point here. So, what we have done is to consider a component we already know that the cardinality of the component is odd and then we uh, removed a vertex from this odd component. So, that uh, the total uh, number of vertices in the component became um, in that the remaining number became an even number. So, let us call that graph g dash and now this g dash is a smaller graph we can apply induction hypothesis. Therefore, it should have a bad set, bad set means the number of uh, components odd components is strictly greater than the cardinality of that bad set. We call that bad set S dash and uh, by considering the parity because the total number of vertices has to be even we can immediately infer that the vert number of vertices in S dash uh, and the number of vertices uh, number of odd components of it should have the same parity. 
that is if one is odd the other also has to be odd if one is even the other also has to be even so therefore it cannot be the number of odd components is more than the cardinality of s dash but it cannot be just one more than because if it is just one more then their parity will be different so it has to be at least two more this is very crucial because we need at least two more so what we are doing now is to make a new set x by adding the removed vertex x into s and also this bad set s dash into s. So, we have increased the set by uh, from s to uh, x and the num number increase uh, the cardinality of s dash plus 1 is the uh, increase. But then along with that the number of odd components also increases because when we removed s dash so many new odd components got produced. They will all be counted for this new set x when we consider the odd components of g minus x. But we know that there are at least two more there. So, for the s two more odd components than s dash. So, uh, now uh, we have destroyed one odd component added s dash plus two odd components that is a total increase of s dash plus one odd components. So, and that balances the increase of s dash plus 1 in the size of the set. So, and when you consider that d of x which is d uh, the number of components of odd components of uh, uh, g minus x and uh, um, cardinality of x. So, the increase in both the terms is equal. So, therefore, because it is some difference we are considering it is the same. So, therefore, it it may be it might have increased, but we know that it will not go up because d of s is the biggest value possible. So, uh, now we what we see is x is from the set f and uh, we had already assumed that s is the biggest possible set that I can pick up. So, therefore, it is not possible uh, it is a it is a contradiction therefore, it is a factor critical graph. Now, let us see uh, the the um, uh, the last thing we have to show is by considering that bipartite graph which is obtained by contracting the components and uh, which is obtained by uh, say if at all there are some edges inside s you delete it you make a bipartite graph out of that. So, there s is matchable is what we wanted to say. Now, so, we can easily show this thing. So, we consider s here. So, the, these are the components. So, I am just drawing it. We can assume that this has got contracted into one vertex, right? So, and then so there some connections will come. So, I have explained what contracting means in the last class. So, it will it will be a bipartite graph like this. Now, suppose this uh, I want to show that there is a matching of S. We can use Hall's theorem. What was Hall's theorem? Hall's theorem says that. Um, Hall's theorem says that uh, any subset say A of S if I take, if I take A subset of S and if I consider N of A, if the cardinality is greater than or equal to A for any subset A, then we say that the Hall's condition is satisfied and then if the Hall's condition is satisfied, then there will be a matching of S. This was what Hall's theorem says, say, said. So, now consider a subset A here. So, now suppose the Hall's condition is not valid here. So, what does it mean? If I consider the neighborhood of it, so it will be so it will be like this. If I consider the like this is some set A. So, if we consider the neighborhood of it, so we will see some these are the components. So, uh, some these are the components, we will see some components. So, it can be like this, but the number of things you see in this thing is strictly less than this right this let me say this is a uh, now this total was s and there are other components here of case these are the other components right so these are but you see any none of them will be connected to a so they are all connected into this only right now the question is what if i consider say this set this set which is essentially the uh, S minus A, the set S minus A. Now, I could have considered this set S minus A. So, what happens is, uh, so I can consider the D of 
s minus a what will be the situation so of case d of s minus a is uh, so let us say d of I can use this notation that will be easier s bar a is equal to uh, say q of g minus s bar a right and then minus uh, cardinality of s minus a right so cardinality of s bar a okay so now you see there is a reduction here in the number of components out components there is a reduction here also why is there a reduction here because uh, so there may be a reduction here so if at all there is a reduction the only the components which are the neighbors of s bar a will be uh, reduced and uh, here the reduction is um, sorry the the neighbors of a will be reduced for instance so here these components will disappear from my count because they may not be connected to this right so they may not be for instance all of this thing may become a new component and they may not be even uh, may not be odd it may become an odd component so we have to just look at uh, this portion we have to look at this portion so so how what is the reduction reduction is uh, this the n of a how many the cardinality of n of a will be the reduction while uh, while the second term the reduction is cardinality of a but you know the cardinality of a is a uh, bigger term therefore you are redu reducing more here so the overall this will be bigger this will increase this will be bigger than uh, q of g minus s minus s so this is what it's not uh, bigger than it will be strictly bigger so so therefore this will be a contradiction you see so what happens is this this quantity is the this quantity is the this quantity is the d of s and we know that this is supposed to be the biggest but you know when we consider s bar a it's d of um, s bar a became the the yeah so this this became bigger than that so it is going to be a contradiction so therefore we can say that the halls condition is always valid for this thing so this portion if uh, to summarize what we did is we considered the um, set s and uh, to show that there exists a matching of s we show we wanted to show uh, that the halls condition is valid for this bipartite graph from the s side so we can take any subset a and then look at the neighborhood of it the neighborhood of it is suppose the halls condition is wrong some for some set a some subset a the neighborhood has to be smaller so now what we do is we consider the instead of uh, yes we consider the s uh, the set s minus s bar a right so we say that the number of odd components may reduce by uh, n of a while the set size is reduced by a so the total uh, uh, the expression q of g minus s yes, uh, minus cardinality of s this expression for this new set uh, will give a bigger value so therefore it's a it's a uh, contradiction that's why the halls condition cannot be false for this graph and because the halls condition is true uh, we get a matching of s that is what uh, we see so finally what we have shown is this three properties that uh, sorry two properties is true for this specially selected set s so that is uh, each component is factor critical and also that uh, the bipartite graph which we which we produced out of this is uh, uh, is a is uh, has a matching of s so now um, not only that if such a set s exists then we can tell a little more about the structure of maximum matchings in g so what can we tell so let's let's look at uh, the the thing what can uh, we tell about the maximum matchings in this 
So, if you look at this set, suppose this is a set S which has these two properties and uh, so I will say this is the S and then these are all its components. These are all remember these are all factor critical components of G minus S, this is S. Now, you can say you give me any matching M. So, for any M I can put two kinds of uh, uh, edges. See some edges are like this for instance they can have uh, both the endpoints in a component. So, it can be like this or it can be like this right within see both the endpoints can be inside a component. So, this uh, let us say they are called uh, K C the number of such matching edges from M is K C C right. Now, we see how many such uh, edges can be there maximum. So, this K C has to be less than equal to uh, the total number of uh, vertices in the um, total number of vertices in the component right. So, here we see that uh, the maximum possible is because as, as you can as you can see. So, there is in each of this factor critical component. So, you can you may you will always get because this is odd you will always get one vertex which does not have a pair here it is not possible to get the entire component matched. So, essentially the maximum matching you can get is only say if this is C i vertices in this in the ith component. So, the C i minus 2 is the maximum matching you can get. So, other than the vertices in S you also have to give up one vertex from each uh, component. So, therefore, the biggest number of uh, matching edges such that both its endpoints are in some component is only half of the total number of vertices let us say n minus the total number of components I will use this uh, notation for that. Okay. So, C uh, plus uh, or maybe I can I can use a letter for this the total number of components can be taken as say n c right and uh, uh, of case minus cardinality of s right. This is the biggest uh, such number of edges you can get from this thing k c for given a matching. Similarly, we can have another type of edges called uh, so, I will use the notation to notation k s to denote that which is having at least one endpoint from s which is having at least one s endpoint from s. So, essentially you see so this is uh, so it can be an edge like this right. So, it can be an edge like this or it can be an edge like this. So, or it can be an edge like this right both, both endpoints here. So, if you are uh, considering such kind of edges you can have only this many because there are this many vertices in S. So, even if each matching a such edge is taking one vertex from S you will have to show that k. Uh, so, we, we will see that k s is less than equal to s. So, therefore, the cardinality of any matching has to be less than equal to k c plus k s right. So, that is cardinality of s plus half equal to n minus n c minus cardinality of s this is what we see right. So, this will this will be correct. So, now uh, this is n. Now, we can see that not only that this is an upper bound there are some matchings which achieve this um, bound. So, any matching m should have cardinality at most this only that is the cardinality of s plus half of n minus n c minus cardinality of s. But if you consider this kind of a matching for instance let us go back to our picture where yeah here uh, it is clear that you can because this is a factor critical graph you can remove the so first and also you can first get a matching of this versus this by the second property sorry first property we will get uh, you can get 
each vertex of S matched to some vertex in the components. So, one matching edge going from one vertex of S and uh, to a vertex of S and then so we will we will be able to match it off like that right or or if I want to draw here another one. So, here this is the S and then we know by this first property if we had contracted all these things you will get a matching uh, from here to here right that is what this second property says. So, therefore, so it so happens that um, so you can find uh, matching edges going from each vertices of S to the components like this and uh, um, so once I have removed one vertex this one vertex here. So, each of them are factor critical therefore, I should be able to pair them up completely right. So, here we get C 1 minus 1 by 2, C 2 minus 1 by 2, C 3 minus 1 by 2. So, total of when you sum up you will get n minus s minus n c by 2. See s because this much is not there in them, uh, this because 1 is being lost for each of them. So, n minus n c plus we have s of them. So, here is a matching which can be formed uh, with this cardinality. So, that means the cardinality of the maximum matching has to be this much. So, it is so we repeat that uh, uh, there exists a matching of this cardinality and any matching has to be of cardinality less than or equal to this. So, that means this is a maximum matching and not only that any maximum matching should be of this type. Why? Because you can see that uh, if it is a maximum matching it should have uh, this much size this plus this right together. So, but if this was strict case was strictly for that particular matching case was strictly less than s. Uh, so, to achieve this value this has to be the other term has to be bigger than this which is not possible right. So, therefore, uh, this has to be a strict uh, uh, inequality here that may sorry this cannot be a strict inequality here that means, it has to be an equality here this also has to be an equality. So, that means, in any maximum matching we should have k s in any maximum matching we should have k s equal to cardinality of s and k c equal to half of n minus n c minus cardinality of s this much is important. Now, it tells us that it is not possible to uh, do it arbitrarily. For instance, if you want to get this this much this this value for k c, then the only way is to match as much as possible in this thing. That means, you can only leave out one vertex from this thing. So, or otherwise we will go below this thing. So, similarly you have to take all except one from this thing. So, you should somehow match. So, similarly here also I should match all except one from this thing and then every odd component here every component will leave out one vertex they should get their partners from S. So, uh, the it has to be like this it should be a perfect matching between this and this there would not be any edge of this sort that will never happen. So, they will this vertices will always get mapped to the components and uh, the remaining things will have to be. Uh, completely from the odd component and uh, the, the components and each component will give you a matching which matches everything except one vertex. So, this is the only way the ma maximum matchings can exist. So, that is what uh, it says. So, now again this uh, finally, let me summarize the last part it says. So, we um, by proving that there exists a set S with the two properties. Uh, not only that we could infer Tut's theorem, we could also infer uh, some structural information about the any maximum matching in G. Uh, so, that means, any maximum matching with respect to this such a set S has to behave in a certain way. So, it uh, sh should match 
each other component as much as possible. That means, it can only leave out one, one vertex you will have to leave out because it is an odd uh, component. That means, there is everything cannot be matched. So, one vertex only it can leave out and uh, that left out vertex should get his partner from the uh, yes. This is the only way the maximum matching can appear. If you violate this, then you will not get a maximum matching. So, that is what uh, it says. So, about the structure of the perfect matching. And now, uh, coming back to so this, um, uh, so to uh, give a, uh, to remember, recall all the things that we were doing. So, we already covered several concepts like one, so the, sorry, sorry, I have, I have one more theorem to finish here. So, here, um, here is a theorem from Peterson, which uh, says every bridgeless cubic graph has a perfect matching. So, what does it mean? So, you consider a graph, a, a bridge means something like this. For instance, if you, if you remove an edge, if the graph gets disconnected, then it is called a bridge. So, so for instance, this is a bridge for instance, here this is a bridge, here this is a bridge, this is a bridge or in a tree, this is a tree, all are bridges, this is a bridge, this is a bridge, this is a bridge, all are bridges, right. So, in this graph, in a cycle graph, there are no bridges. So, you can cut any edge, it will not get, the graph will not get disconnected. So, um, so the that is what a bridge is. So, so it should give two components. One one of the inverters should go on one side, and the other should go on the other side. So suppose the graph doesn't have any bridge, and then uh, you can always find a perfect matching in it. So this is an application of the Tutts theorem. So we'll just quickly go through the uh, state this proof of this. So, suppose we consider uh, a bridgeless cubic graph G, right. So, now uh, to show that this is two properties are there, it is bridgeless, two is cubic. Cubic means it is a three regular graph. So, that means uh, each vertex has degree three. Now, you can consider any subset S. I will show that your q of g minus s is uh, less than equal to cardinality of s. If you show this thing for every subset, then the Tutts condition is true. Therefore, um, we will have a perfect matching. This is an application of Tutts theorem. So, I considered this subset s and now uh, suppose you consider the odd components of it, these are the odd components. So, there can be even components that discard them for the time being. This is the odd component 1, O 1, O 2, O 3 like that. So, this is some odd thing. Now, you see, so this being odd, so and each degree each vertex has degree 3. So, each vertex has degree 3 here. So, what is the sum of degrees here? So, here suppose there were n 1 vertices here, n 1 into 3 is the sum of vertices 3 n, 3 n 1. But then 3 is an odd number, n 1 is also an odd number, this has to be an odd number. So, what is the sum of degrees for the induced subgraph here? It is always an even number because the sum of degrees because sum of degrees degrees is equal to 2 times number of edges in the graph, right. Because why is it so? This is because if you consider any word, any edge, it will contribute 1 to the uh, degree of this and another 1 to the degree of this. So, each edge is contributing 2 to the sum of the degrees. So, 2 times, so actually 2 times the number of edges 
is essentially the sum of degrees or so right all the vertices if you consider so uh, it so happens that uh, the when you sum up the degrees you will get two times the number of edges therefore it has to be an even number you see uh, here but this is an odd number what does it mean some edges has to go out of this right every edge cannot be inside this so how many edges has to go out because the total is sum of degrees is odd and here we have we can only get inside this we can get an only an only an even number so we should get an odd number of edges going out of it because for each outgoing edge we will count one here right not two so therefore an odd number of edges can has to go out the question is uh, which are the possibilities so can it be that just one edge goes out for instance out of this is it possible that I had just one edge going out? You see this as far as the oddness and evenness is concerned it is fine because even plus 1 is an uh, sorry odd even plus 1 is an odd number that is that does not give it any contradiction. But then, then this will become a bridge why because if you remove this thing this component will get separated from the rest of the uh, graph. So, it is not possible to have just one edge going out of it. So, the next number is 3 that means at least 3 edges has to go out of each component and out of means it should go into S because now it cannot no edge can go from a component to component. So, each component will send 3 edges into the so therefore, we get Q into G minus S into 3 edges are going into S but then S should accept all these things but each vertex of S can take maximum 3 edges because anyway it is a 3 regular graph. So, we need ca cardinality of S into 3 to be bigger than this quantity because this many edges are coming only this many edges can be taken by S. So, cutting this we get Q of G minus S is less than equal to cardinality of S and this is the touch condition and this is true for every set by our argument right. So, the touch condition is valid. So, there is a perfect matching in the graph. This is what so we are um, so we can we can prove using touch theorem for uh, cubic bridgeless graphs. Now, okay, the uh, the ideas about uh, matching uh, the sufficient and necessary condition for matching is this much, and now we will again recall the things we were doing. So, now the so we studied independent set matching and vertex cover that is the main three concepts we went through. So, what do we mean by that? So, so independent set was a collection of vertices subset of vertices such that uh, they are there are if you consider an induced subgraph on those vertices there is no edge in them. While this was uh, the matching is somehow a, a, an equivalent notion with respect to the uh, any some similar notion with respect to the edges. For instance, a matching is a collection of independent edges in the sense that if you consider two edges in the in a matching, there is no uh, they are uh, not sharing any vertices, right? They are independent. So, with respect to the independent set we have a parameter called uh, alpha of g right alpha of g and uh, this is the independence number independence number right stability number or and uh, similarly with respect to the matching we had uh, defined alpha dash of g namely the biggest cardinality of the biggest matching right which can reach up to n by 2 when it is a perfect match. And uh, the other notion we studied was vertex cover. So, it was called uh, beta of g and uh, this beta of g is the number of vertices required the minimum number of vertices required to cover all the edges of the graph. So, essentially we can say that it is the number of stars required to cover all the um, vertices all the edges of the graph because 
if you take a vertex cover, what we see is with respect to uh, each vertex in the vertex cover, it is covering the edges which are incident. This, this is a star graph, right? So, how many star graphs can cover? Minimum how many star graphs are required? So, that it can cover all the edges uh, of the graph. This does not mean that for instance, you can, you can take it is possible that you have selected this, you can always select this also, that is not a problem. So, how many uh, star graphs are required uh, to cover the, this is the question, right. So, now uh, see, so it is a, it's a natural question to ask. So, after this um, vertex cover, is there a notion of an edge cover? So, let us see, so what is an edge cover? Edge cover means like the vertex cover, I am interested in covering all the vertices using edges. I want to select a few edges uh, such that all the vertices are covered. So, for instance, if this is the uh, if this is the graph, you can select say this edge, this edge, this edge and now this vertex is not covered, you may have to select one more. So, this is an edge cover. You can see if the graph has a perfect matching, so that is an edge cover right the perfect matching covers all the vertices matches all the, uh, I mean a, perf a perfect matching touches all the vertices therefore, it is a, a edge cover. So, now you can see that uh, so that much is necessary also because n by 2 edges are there in that case in the edge cover. So, of course, you cannot do better than that because any edge can cover only 2 vertices. So, if you want to cover an n vertex graph you need n by 2 edges. So, our question is again to minimize the number of edges. So, before that let us ask is it a valid parameter for uh, every uh, every graph, is it possible that every graph has an edge cover. So, of course, it is not possible for some graphs for instance, if the graph has an isolated vertex. So, this vertex cannot be covered using edges because there is no edge on it. So, therefore, we from now on we can whenever we talk of edge cover we can assume that there are no isolated vertices in the graph. So, in that sense an edge cover uh, will exist uh, whenever there is no isolated uh, vertex, vertices. Now, uh, we can we can talk about uh, the minimum edge cover also. I will not give too many examples here uh, because, um, so anyway it is very much like the vertex cover like. Um, so, now, so you can, so for instance I, you can see that in this king in this case so the so this is an edge this is an edge cover like the perfect match sorry yeah this is an edge cover right so now uh, let's say there is an interesting uh, statement that uh, we studied about the connecting vertex cover and the uh, biggest independent set so, what was that? We studied uh, that beta of g plus alpha of g is equal to the number of vertices in the graph n, right. Similarly, we do have a relation between the edge cover and minimum edge cover. So, minimum edge cover so can be can be denoted by beta of beta dash of g because beta of g is the vertex cover let us call it beta dash of g plus alpha dash of g this is the biggest uh, matching. Uh, so, see this matching remember you have the edge uh, corresponding notion in with respect to the edges. So, that is why um, we are using alpha dash. So, beta dash of g plus alpha dash also can be shown to be equal to n. So, uh, how can I show that? So, this is easy. So, one side at least a little bit. So, for instance, you can uh, see that suppose you get a uh, edge cover, sorry, suppose you get a biggest matching in the graph, right. This is alpha dash of g matching, then you can show that uh, from this thing you can get an independent, right. You, by selecting these edges, you have covered this many vertices. There are some vertices which are not yet covered. So, they because there are no isolated vertices, uh, they should have some edges connecting to this, right? 
so why because this is an independent set now there cannot be any edge among them because this is already the biggest matching possible if there was some edge we could have got a little more then some edges will come from here to here so to uh, match uh, each of them i can pick up a pick up an edge connecting it to one of these things right so what do we get so we get alpha dash of g plus what is left here n minus 2 times alpha dash of g is the because 2 times alpha dash of g what is the sir over so this is equal to uh, n minus alpha dash of g so we see that this parameter is this value is definitely an upper bound for our beta dash of g right so this is this only show that n is greater than or equal to beta dash of g um, plus alpha dash of g so what have i now shown i have taken a biggest matching and showed that using that biggest matching how can i get an edge cover of the graph so that its uh, cardinality is n minus alpha dash of g so of course our uh, edge cover can be less than that so we write this equation now we have to show the other side that means you take an edge cover and create a uh, matching from that so we can uh, take a, an edge cover and look at the subgraph formed by the edge cover and then you take the biggest matching from that and then you try to prove that now the other uh, side of the inequality is also true so this is an easy exercise i leave it to you so it is so it so happens that so uh, we get be like this inequality like this inequality we can prove this inequality also so this four parameters um, are interrelated somehow by this uh, in this way and then in the next uh, lecture we will look at uh, uh, very related some very related concepts and again some other covering problems so see you in the next lecture